We've looked at several king pawn openings with pawn to e4. Now let's look at some queen pawn openings with pawn to d4. There are several ways that black can respond to d4, and one of the most common is to do the symmetrical move and play pawn to d5. And white typically follows up with pawn to c4, which is the queen's gambit because notice that black can immediately take the c4 pawn and white can't immediately recapture it. There are two major categories of the queen's gambit depending on what black chooses to do. If black takes the pawn as we've just seen it's called the queen's gambit accepted. If he refuses this gambit pawn and instead plays pawn to e6 this is called the queen's gambit declined. White's second move, let's back up here, is an attempt to trade off Black's more valuable center D pawn for his less valuable wing pawn at C4. If Black plays the Queen's Gambit accepted and takes the, the pawn, it's actually very difficult for him to hang on to this pawn unless White doesn't play accurately, which happens frequently, which is why the Queen's Gambit accepted is still playable. But here's what can happen if black tries to hold on to this extra pawn and if white plays accurately and black does not. So for example if white plays pawn to e3 immediately at attacking the c4 pawn and then black tries to simply guard it with pawn to b5 white can chip away at that support pawn by playing pawn to a4 attacking the support pawn here at b5 and then again if uh, black tries to support the support pawn white can simply take the pawn and then if black recaptures here the queen can slide to f3 attacking this undefended rook and white will win a piece either the rook or the bishop if the bishop tries to interpose for example the queen can take this undefended bishop so by far the more popular responses to the Queen's Gambit where white plays pawn to c4, black more often responds with either pawn to e6 which is the Queen's Gambit declined as I mentioned earlier and pawn to c6 which is the slob defense. So let's look at both of these defenses and a few others starting with the Queen's Gambit declined. You can't have it all in chess, so notice that with pawn to e6, the bishop here is blocked by its own pawn, so this bishop has a little trouble developing. If black tries to avoid this problem and instead play knight to f6, which we looked at earlier when we talked about early queen moves, um, white can simply take the pawn and then if the knight recaptures he gains a tempo by attacking the knight with pawn to e4 and gains a strong center. So this is actually even though um, he develops a piece instead of a pawn it looks like he's following principles this is actually inferior to playing pawn to e6 as black's second move play usually proceeds with knight to f3 or knight to c3 following the principle of moving the knights out before bishops and having greater center influence with either of these two knight moves and whichever knight white chooses to move black usually responds with knight to f6 also influencing the center and preparing for castling from here there are many sub variations and lines that can be played by either side. White still needs to develop his king side so that he can castle and black still needs to develop his bishop so he can castle as well. A lot of opening play revolves around preventing the opponent from developing his pieces to the best squares and cramping the opponent's pieces by gaining more space. This often happens to black in queen pawn openings. So black's first aim is to try and free this bishop and his other pieces so that they can maneuver around the board 
or at least try to equalize white's spatial advantage. Sometimes white has trouble developing his dark squared bishop on the queen side as well. So play can continue with bishop to g5 here, pinning the knight. Black breaking the pin with bishop to e7, and now he can castle and pawn to e3. So now this bishop is outside of this pawn chain where he's more active. Play can continue with black castling, the knight developing to f3, the knight developing to d7 here for black, the rook sliding over, hoping for this file to become open where, where the rook can be active. Black plays pawn to c6 where the queen can get out and also supporting the center pawn. And now the bishop develops to d3 in preparation for castling and is along this long diagonal eyeing this h7 pawn. And now black can try to free, free up his position by playing pawn takes pawn and now when bishop takes, there are different lines that can happen from here. Now the knight can swing over, hoping to trade off pieces, utilizing one of the main principles when you're cramped, and that is to try and trade pieces judiciously. Now the bishop trades off, queen takes, white castles, now the knight trades, continuing with the idea of trading off pieces to free up his position and get his get black's pieces more active. And now the pawn pushes, hoping to free up this bishop along the diagonal. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, and now black's bishop is free and he's relieved some of the cramping that he was experiencing. So this is one strategy that black can use to free up his position and get his pieces more active. Another common way that black uses to free up this bishop is to play, let's back up here, is to play pawn takes, like before, bishop takes, and now pawn to b5, chasing this bishop away, let's say back to d3, and now this bishop is free to develop to b7 here along the long diagonal. So let's see how the queen's gambit plays out in an actual game. So white begins d4, black plays d5, c4, and e6 is the queen's gambit declined. Knight to c3, developing, putting more pressure on d5. Got two attackers here. Two defenders. Knight to f6. Bishop pins the knight. The bishop breaks the pin. Knight to f3, developing central squares. b6 opens up the bishop. Pawn to e3, lets out this bishop in case this pawn takes. Bishop develops on the long diagonal. Good place for the bishops. Pawn takes. He didn't have to, there were different options. Knight takes, bishop takes, big trade-off, queen takes, check with the bishop. And he blocks the check and attacks the bishop at the same time. Let's look quickly to see what would have happened if he handled it a different way. He could have brought the bishop here, he could have brought the knight here, he could block this way, but all of these allow white to add more pressure on that square. So let's say the knight uh, blocks this check. Well, then this knight could swing in and attack the knight. The knight's pinned now. So generally, you don't want to put yourself into a pin. So that's just one of the ways that uh, black could get into trouble. Maybe there are other solutions he could block this way. But again, he'd still be in a pin. And so he wanted to avoid that. And that's why he um, just pushed the bishop away. Let's get back to the main line here. So black played c6 instead, attacking the bishop, but white throws in an in-between move and captures the knight first, because this pawn cannot take, because of the bishop would, is pinning that pawn. So he takes back with this pawn, and now the bishop runs. 
Knight develops, castles, and castles. Rook grabs the open file, which is where rooks belong, all else being equal. F5, strengthening this square. Queen slides over, putting pressure on this pawn, but also notice that it coordinates the, the bishop and queen, and now the bishop could actually slide here and try and trade off this, this bishop. So black stops that and plays a5, blocking this, uh, interfering with this um, coordination here. Rook slides over, x-raying the queen. Queen gets out of that for potential problems that might emerge. X-rays are a big deal in chess. Got to watch out for them. Queen to b3. Pinning this pawn against the king. Pawn attacks the queen, getting her off of that diagonal. Queen runs. Two attackers against the pawn. Notice that how almost every move is a threat or preparing a threat. And that was a big revelation for me um, when I discovered that. Good players are trying to gain the initiative at all times by attacking and preparing an attack to put the opponent on the defensive. He defends that pawn. Queen slides over, coordinating on this square. Rook x-rays the queen. So white plays uh, g3, stopping this push uh, somewhat because of this um, pin, this x-ray. He could actually push that pawn. The pawn would not be able to capture. Knight slides in to get into this nice e4 square, which is defended by the pawns. Try and get into enemy territory. The knight does the same over here. Knight slides back. He wants to get him out of there because we had two attackers on this pawn. Slides up, defends. Queen slides over. King gets out of the way, probably. You know, when you're analyzing games, one way to understand their moves is whenever a piece moves, it vacates that square for another piece to occupy it. So he could slide the rook over here now, which I think he does do. Rook slides over here, and the rook takes here. So he wants to um, start putting pressure on this file towards the king. He's trying to mobilize his pieces over to the king side, try and get a peace majority there so he can have a successful attack. Pawn pushes, trying to open up this diagonal, now that the king is on it, trying to make this bishop strong. Rook slides over in anticipation of probably advancing this pawn. So he's getting all of his pieces over here, as I mentioned. He attacks the bishop, bishop backs off. King gets out of this x-ray plays a3 probably to prevent this the opening of this file over here my first guess pawn pushes <laughs> yeah, so he had that maybe that in mind and now he tries to break open this king side here make his rooks powerful pawn takes knight takes two attackers on this the knight's defending it we have two defenders Queen slides over, probably try to get over here on the on the H file. Bishop slides over where he'll be more useful since this is all blocked up by his own pawns now. Queen slides up. Yeah, she probably wants to come over here because this would be in the x-ray of the queen and bishop. Rook up defending this pawn. Queen does get over here. Rook slides over, trying to become more useful here, defending this pawn. Queen slides up, putting two attackers on this pawn with the with the bishop. And when the knight moves, there will be three, and this pawn is pinned. Just trying to maneuver to get more, more pieces, trying to get a force majority, one of the elements of chess, and then the attack could be successful. Queen slides over, defending this pawn opening up this diagonal for the bishop, try and trade off some of these attackers. That's one of the strategies you use when um, under attack, and you're just defending, you try and trade off some of the attackers, and then you might have a chance later to go on the offensive yourself. 
Rook slides over, right, to get in here and defend this pawn too, but to get more pressure over here. <laughs> they're really defending this because there is a pin here, and this bishop could take this pawn at some point. Rook slides over. King gets out of that x-ray there. Queen slides back, allowing the knight to slide here with check, so there's a threat. Win the rook. King goes back. The knight slides in anyway. Now the king can't run to this square. This rook's under attack. She's got to come off. Slides back. And now the pawn opens it up because there are two attackers on this rook and the queen is defending and the king. Knight slides in. Now this pawn is pinned because the bishop would win the queen if it captures right now. Queen gets out of that pin. Threats and counter threats. Knight attacks the rook. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Yeah, now he can take that pawn. He's got enough attackers on it. Pawn takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. Queen takes. And notice that uh, white won a pawn earlier. And he's got this pass pawn, which could become a queen later on in the endgame if this attack doesn't work. Queen slides over to try and relieve the pressure, try and trade off the queens. But the queen runs, attacking the undefended rook. And here it's game over. Black resigns here. Let's see if, if there is a solution. If the rook comes off the back rank, then this check would be definitive because the king wouldn't have a, a running square, an escape square, because of the rooks here. And if the rook comes off of this file, for example, let's say it comes here, then this check is quite deadly because there's only, again, the king can't run, only the queen could block, and then the queen could take, and it would be checkmate. So there's probably no solution here, and this is why. Black resigned. So in this game, the queen's gambit declined. Didn't work for black. <laughs> but sometimes it does, although white wins more games generally by virtue of having the first move.